Loki is is finally getting the hang of going outside by himself to go pee because for for many years he was used to being put on a leash to go out because Sarah didn't have a yard with right. with a fence, so she had, had gone on a leash. He doesn't need a leash here, and he's getting used to going outside by himself. So he goes outside to pee, and he really really had to pee, but there was a squirrel, and he was a bit torn because yeah, he had to, tough one. he had to pee, but there was a squirrel like six but feet away. And the squirrel was just looking at him. And Loki was like... <laughs> uh, and so he starts slowly, sort of almost crab walking oh. toward the squirrel, but he does not stop peeing. <laughs> so he's peeing the whole way, and the squirrel is just like, get the fuck out of here. And the squirrel... I feel like your best option then is to pull a ranged pee attack on the squirrel. <laughs> Loki wasn't thinking that far ahead. The squirrel... We had a wildlife adventure here. Oh, yeah i I looked. I, I went over to say hi to Dottie in her little window bed the other day, and I saw just this big pile of white feathers right outside in the backyard, outside the window. Like you know, when Randy Johnson hit that pigeon with a fastball, and it just exploded. <laughs> so I was like, well, okay. And we, we have a couple people in the neighborhood have outdoor cats. So I'm like, all right, clearly that wandered through our yards. So I'm like, all right, clearly a neighborhood cat murdered something. Uh huh. So I go out to investigate and I see there's the explosion of white feathers. And then about 10 feet away is the big, big mangled gray and white striped carcass of what was once some kind of bird. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Well, Okay. And your cat was just staring at it. I'm not touching that. So I take some pictures and I send it to Dan. I'm like, this is your project when you get home from work. <laughs> don't call it a project. I don't do carcasses. Yeah, but don't call it a project because Dan's on the way home getting like, okay, I'm going to need some wire. Yeah. Uh, some uh, some like, stuffing. You're, uh... you're a hillbilly. You deal with carcasses. <laughs> So we, we both assumed that a neighborhood cat had caught it until he came home and got a better look at it. And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, we don't have birds like that in our yard. I have like three bird feeders out. I'm like, I've never seen a bird like that. And he's like, yeah, no, that's because it was a small hawk. I'm like, what the fuck kind of cat? And he's like, it wasn't a cat. It was probably a really big owl. Because apparently the bird's head was like crushed. And he's like, yeah, what an owl will do this, is swoop in, grab it with the talons, and then crush its head. This is to like get rid of competition. This is like suburban wildlife CSI. Right? We got bird gang wars going on in our <laughs> yard. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. Did Dan get out like a cigarette and a trench coat and a pair of sunglasses? Like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> you can definitely tell it was an owl did this. Apparently, we have the owl from Twin Peaks living in my neighborhood, just killing shit. So he's like, I don't know if we can bring Peggy out in the yard on the leash anymore. I don't want her getting picked up and carried away. So yeah, that was our little wildlife adventure. Things you don't think happen in suburbia. And now I'm worried because we have a little bunny that lives somewhere in our yard, I think under the deck. Had. And I haven't seen the bunny except for he leaves tracks in the snow. Had. And bunny. yeah, I'm, I'm concerned that we no longer have a bunny. You had a bunny. You don't have a bunny no more. I've never actually seen the bunny. I just see bunny tracks are all moving all around our house every time it snows. So I'm kind of hoping the bunny is hidden from the owl. But I guess we'll find out this week when it snows again. Oh, nature. Yeah. <sighs> all right. Well, all that having been done, it's time for... The nonsense. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And last night crazy. was the Oscars. It was. And I hate the Oscars. I love the Oscars. It is a whole bunch of tedious, political, ridiculous bullshit it's a whole bunch of fashion amazingness you know what i had i had a perfect idea for this if we love the red carpet so much why don't we just have the red carpet every three months and get rid of the fucking award show 
you know. Did you, did you hear this year's red carpet? You know about Ryan Seacrest. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No one would. And nobody would talk to him. I wonder why. But Where I is thought. The styling Chadwick Boseman, though, this award season is fucking killing it because that dude looks amazing <laughs> everywhere he goes. But I thought I could avoid the fucking Oscars because I hate the fucking Oscars. I thought it would just be simple. Oh, the Oscars. But you know what? No, guess what? The Oscars decided it wanted to jump into my goddamn wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. Man suspected of stealing Francis McDormand's Oscar. It's got her name on it, you know? A man who apparently swiped Francis McDormand's Oscar trophy, boasted about it on Facebook claiming he wanted for music before being arrested on suspicion of grand theft felony. Yeah, because those things are expensive. Terry Bryant, 47, was being held on $20,000 bail for allegedly stealing the statue at the Governor's Ball soon after Saturday night's 90th Academy Awards ceremony. Um, quote, Sup, babies. Look, my team got this tonight. Who wants to tell me congratulations? Bryant, dressed in a tuxedo, said in a video posted on Facebook, quote, this is mine. We got it tonight, baby. Onlookers asked to touch the statuette and offered congratulations, apparently unaware the Oscar belonged to McDormand. Yeah. Like, did he even do, does he even work on movies? No, he does not. So then... Who was going to believe you? Apparently like other easy. people at the party believed him. That's pretty easy to Google. Yeah. And like, we live in an age where pretty much everybody has the whole sum of human knowledge in their pocket. Well, yeah, and even better, here's a picture of the guy taken by a photographer there who was trying to steal the goddamn Oscar. So you can Google this guy's name, Oscar, and when nothing comes up, well, well now he didn't win one. Now something is going to come up. Yes. Forever. Forever. So if you ever want to do anything in entertainment, Mr. Bryant, if you want to do anything at all, that's not happening now. And Frances McDormand is pretty fucking cool, so that's a messed up thing to do to her, like... Oh, M M Francis McDormand actually said, you know, once they got the Oscar, he, he, someone yanked the Oscar away from him as he tried to escape. And once and Francis McDormand was just like, I'll let him go. Yeah. She didn't give a shit. Like, I, I admit, I didn't see three billboards. I've heard mixed reviews on it. Yeah. Um, she won all the awards for that movie this year. So I don't know how she was in the movie, but all her speeches were fantastic. Yeah. Like every time she wins an award and I'm like, this is gonna be fun because she just gets up there and gives no fucks. I just it. How this isn't gonna work, buddy? No. And posting it to social media, like you're not fooling. It's like the guy with the helicopter. I mean, this if, is not a sustainable lie. If this if was you going to get some chick to come home with you, she's gonna ask to see your Oscar. If and she's this, not going to be the one in your pants. If this shit was going to work, DiCaprio would have done it years ago. Yeah. Oh, well, we have a story I think you're going to love, Tara. Um, Have you heard of Axe Body Spray, by chance? Have you ever heard of this product? Are you aware of this one? Unfortunately, I am aware of this product. Axe Body Spray, which... Which um, I was married to an Italian. Apparently, it is it is some form of form of a uh, perfume type. See, perfume is a word with a positive <laughs> connotation, so I wouldn't call it that. Axe body spray is a product designed to create a cloud of Guido stench around you. But do you know what perfume and Axe body spray have in common? They're smelly and flammable yes that too car explodes after man uses axe body spray light cigarette 
Oh, God. Police in Maryland say a car blew up when a man inside lit a cigarette after spritzing himself with an aerosol body spray. The cigarette and spray combination caused a sudden and violent explosion of the air molecules in the car Thursday, creating a boom that pushed the roof up, shattered the front window, and blew the doors open. How much did he spray? I mean... Pretty much everybody I have ever known that uses Axe uses way too much. It's a product designed for people who don't know how much to use. So I'm going to go ahead and assume he put on too much. But like how too much? Peach said the driver appeared unharmed and was taken to the hospital to check for hearing damage. The Baltimore County Police said on his social media accounts, the man was taken to a burn unit with serious injuries. Um, apparently he's a butcher. Well, he's fine. Well, no, uh, according to the truck, apparently he's a butcher. He's a butcher. Yeah. I, I just nobody wants their pork roast to smell like that. Look at that car, though. Yeah. Look at that fucking car. These are the dangers of Axe body spray. This should be. You remember that these? This is your brain on drugs. Yeah. We should now have a before picture of this car that says, this is your car. This is your car on Axe Body Spray. That is just kaboom. It will destroy everything you love and nobody will touch your penis. And it wasn't even like, when they say it blew the roof up, it wasn't even like, you know, a moon roof. That blew. No, no, the <laughs> fucking <laughs> roof came roof off. off. <laughs> Those doors <laughs> are mangled. Stuffing. Wow, how the fuck much did you spray? Too much, just, just. Wow. And I, wow. I'm still, that car is, that is amazing. <laughs> that is, wow. How was he not injured? Well, it was a flash explosion. Also, I'm just going to take a guess and say that he was also so slathered in hair gel that that probably protected him. How is he alive? That is... It, it was, he probably had a thick layer of hair gel and bronzer that got burned up first. It's probably what happened was in an explosion like that. There wasn't... In, it, was, it wasn't so much that it was a massive explosion... It was a small explosion in a contained area. Yeah. And somehow he managed to get the air to mixture ratio just right. Because you can't, this isn't like an automatic thing. No. It's, you have to get a balance. Don't try this at home, please. You, you have to get a balance of oxygen and the flammable gaseous material just right in order to cause an explosion. <laughs> He's definitely missing his eyebrows. Yeah, probably. Those are gone. Those are gone. Just don't, don't, don't do X. Don't do it. Don't, <clears throat> don't ever do that. Oh. They have like 12 different scents and they're all bad. Remember when they were doing the chocolate one and they had that commercial for the guy who was turned into chocolate and women kept showing up and yanking yeah. parts off of him and eating and him their and... whole ad campaign has always been based around if you wear this women will fall on your dick and that's not Listen, true i'm a woman i'm a woman i know a lot of women i don't know a single woman who thinks axe body spray is sexy no not a one no <sighs> well this one's from your neck of the woods oh, by God. way of west virginia I feel like we have a lot in my neck of the woods these days, and I don't like it. So, I... This didn't happen when I lived in Connecticut. <laughs> I've never used an Uber. I have no desire to use a fucking Uber. I, I reject them on just moral grounds, but... I have. I have used Uber. It was before we all knew that they were horrible. This is kind of... I don't even know how the fuck this is possible. And yet, Uber was like, okie dokie. Axe Signature Gold is great smelling. Having not smelled it, I can assure you that it is not. 
A $1,600 Uber ride. Drunk Whoa. man blacks out, takes a trip from West Virginia to New Jersey. Uh, after a night of partying with his buddies in Morgantown, West Virginia last Friday, Kenny Bachman thought he had called an Uber to take him back to where he was staying near West Virginia's university campus. Instead, he woke up in the passenger seat in a 2011 Toyota Sienna minivan next to an Uber driver that was taking him home. Not where he was staying with his friends in West Virginia, but home home. Uh, this is actually in an article, a newspaper article. Like where he lives in Gloucester County, more than 300 miles away. I'm just going to point out the person who wrote this, uh, Jeremy Schneider, writing for New NewJersey.com, wrote, like where he lives. I write like that, but not for an official journalistic purpose. Anyway. And guys, everyone in the chat, I need you to stop defending acts to me. No. Yeah. No. There is no defense. I don't want to hear about it. No. No. Um, I just woke up, Bachman told uh, New Jersey Advanced Media on a phone interview, and I'm thinking, why the fuck am I in a car next to some <laughs> random ass dude I don't even know? The price, what? a hefty $1,635.93. And apparently how this happened, what I've tried to unravel from looking into the story, what this happened was his Uber account has his home address right. in New Jersey. And his drunk ass told the driver to take him home. Didn't reset it to per like temporary home. I want to know what Uber driver was willing to do this. Like most Uber drivers. Well. You're doing this as a side gig or whatever. Like who just. All right. I got a day and a half. It, it gets. I found out why that happened too. Okay. He used Uber Excel. Which is Uber's those um, are the bigger ones. Uber's limousine service, where they right. they're, they're those aren't just people who are doing the gig, the gig economy, which I fucking hate that term. Those aren't the people who are doing that. They're they're professional cab, well, upscale vehicle, whatever fucking drivers, um, that that work for companies and Uber subcontracts them. Yeah, a few of the Ubers I have taken are actually a livery service. Yeah, that yeah. Now, had he actually gone with the regular Uber, it would now, have regular been... regular Ubers have livery services working for him, too. Well, had, had he gone for the regular Uber, it would have only been $800. But because it was Uber XL, $1,600. So... But I just... I, I Like, on a moment's notice... <laughs> Some dude just drove him. Well, I'm guessing it's one of those instances of the customer is always right. Yeah, but you wouldn't think in like the gig the gig economy, when like Uber can turn you down. They have to accept you. So like if you have a shitty rating, if you're a shitty passenger, there could be 62 Ubers around the corner from you, but none of them will pick you up. Or if you're going somewhere no one wants to go, they won't pick you up. They can they can just not pick you up. Or like. They have to proactively choose to pick you up. So somebody chose to do that. Now, initially, he was all like, man, I ain't paying this. But he got in contact with Uber and finally guys like, OK, I'll pay it. So don't drink an Uber, guys. Don't don't because they will do what you tell them to do, even if what you tell them they to will. do is stupid. I mean, it's better than drinking and driving for sure. Hmm. But. Maybe set up, like, preset your Uber presets before you start drinking. Yes. <clears throat> so you know where the fuck your Uber is taking you. Yes. Oh, we're having such fun with Comcast tonight. I am leaving you guys. Baby, don't don't try and keep me. I am I am out the door, Comcast. Yeah, because on Skype you look and sound real bad. Oh yeah, yeah. You 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 can you you can fuck right off. Comcast, we're leaving. We're 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 leaving you. We're
we're leaving you. We have a choice now. I blame the audience because they all started poking virtual Comcast voodoo dolls right before you Skyped me. I don't know why you all wanted to jinx it. Oh, so we, we've had uh, stories on here before where um, people attempt to hide illegal shit from the cops just before they're arrested. Yes, usually inside themselves. This is probably the first time I've seen someone try to hide the illegal substance while they're being booked. Oh. Suspect hides cocaine in the ceiling of Omaha Police Headquarters. Huh. Omaha, Nebraska. The story unfolds inside an interrogation room on the third floor of Omaha Police Headquarters. Douglas County attorney provided video of the two-hour incident. Um, Thomas Hartman, 25, first filed a report with police saying he was a victim of crime. He said his brother robbed him. The detectives did their homework. Uh, detective asked Hartman to come clean several times, but Hartman insisted his brother stole the money. While charging Hartman with false reporting, his 17-year-old girlfriend was in another room talking with detectives about sex trafficking. Video shows Hartman knocking and banging on the wall and yelling for his girlfriend. Um, following a police report, Tina told detective she was doing sexual favors in exchange for money. So this is a lovely guy. Yeah. 90 minutes later, the video shows Hartman stacking a chair on the table, climbing on top, and messing around with a ceiling tile. Officers catch him in the act, and they wonder if he's trying to escape. Um... Quote, you're at the frickin' police station, man, and you put a chair up and tried to get in the ceiling. Turns out Hartman wasn't escaping. He hid something. It, this gets even better. The officer didn't see it when he was searching the ceiling, but it's easy to miss. A white ball falls out of the, uh, when the officer lifts up the ceiling tile. He found someone else's wallet up there. Wait a minute. <laughs> What? You solved a completely unrelated crime. Unrelated goddamn crime. And, but then, but uh, it wasn't until the technician strained up the room when she discovered the drugs on the floor. So this fucking asshole falsely accused his brother of stealing from him. Yep. For reasons unknown. Mm -hmm. Was pimping out his girlfriend. Teenage girlfriend. His underage girlfriend, yeah. Yep. And decided to hide his drugs in the fucking police station. In the ceiling! On camera! It's a police station. There's cameras everywhere. It's a fucking police station. Do you think there aren't cameras everywhere? Shit! What the hell? What's he gonna be like? I'll come back for this later. Just like, fuck a whole mixing bowl of this guy. Like, they weren't going to notice. I mean, shit, they've got... Look, look at this fucker. They've got pictures down here. Look. Look at this fucker up on a chair. Like, they weren't going to notice that shit. It's a little suspicious when you're crawling around in the ceiling tiles. I'm just saying. That's... Not, how do you play that off? He's like, oh, no, I was just... I was... I was checking out um your, your wiring. Yeah, I thought I heard your HVAC making some noise. Oh, yeah, you need to get that looked at. Yeah, mm -hmm, that'll, no. co that'll cost you money come the wintertime. Fuck this guy. Oh. Oh, well, okay, here's an even bigger fuck this guy. We're, we're at airplanes again, so this is kind of one of those. We have an airplane story every week now. It's getting worse up there. What the fuck? We need a whole separate show for airplane shit. We do. Well, this one is, this is a, yeah, fuck a whole bowl of this guy. Um, passengers stripped naked, watched porn before attacking air hostess. Pastor on a flight from Malaysia has been arrested. Oh, these pictures. Yeah, they do. We'll see them in a second. Pastor on a flight from Malaysia has been arrested after reportedly stripping naked to watch porn before attacking a stewardess. Shortly after the uh, 
Melindo Air Flight left Kuala Lumpur on Saturday, the 20-year-old Bangladeshi took off his clothes and started watching pornography on his laptop. The man, a student at a Malaysian university, initially put his clothes back on at the request of the cabin crew. According to reports, the man tried to hug an air hostess on his way to the toilet. When his advances were rejected, he said to have become aggressive and attacked the stewardess. According to Malaysian st uh, Star Online, the man also masturbated and urinated on his seat. I understand the oh. <laughs> understand the cabin crew and passengers tied him up with a piece of cloth and contained him for the rest of the flight. And yeah, there's pictures. There he is. Just that's. Let's just let's just go down the fucking list. <laughs> okay. One. Airplane, not a place to be naked and jerking it. <laughs> Just not. I don't know how you don't. I don't know how you've made it this far in life not knowing that. But there's one, oh. two. Don't fucking hug women you don't know. Especially nice because they're paid to. Especially let's 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 go under that. Especially after, after you have been naked and jerking it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Three. When said women don't want you to hug them. Don't be a dick about it. Four, none of your fucking bodily fluids belong on a public seat. Not a goddamn one. I just, I, you like mother... If you're, if you're a profuse sweater, you should put a jacket under your ass. Did, did he just think, oh, this will be fine? No one had... The, the, the god... Lord, give me the confidence of a man who can walk on to a commercial airline, strip naked, and start jerking it like he's in his own basement. Because that is Jesus. This is... I mean, I kind of feel like they should have made him ride in cargo for the rest of his life. <laughs> Put him in an overhead compartment. Yeah. Just, you sit up there now and think about what you did. When you can act like a fucking human, you get a seat like a fucking human. Oh. Until then, you're getting a, you're gonna get put in a dog crate in cargo. <sighs> you want to be naked with your dick out? You can ride with Fido. <laughs> I just it, what what is? Oh my god! Who thinks that's okay? <sighs> I just, who just thinks, like, this is a normal thing I'm about to do. I don't understand why everyone's so upset. Hmm. And yet men on Twitter are still like, none of that shit happens to women anymore. <laughs> men are the victims. We got one final one. This one comes from uh, Dublin. Oh, good. No, I'll not. There in a few weeks. Not good. Um... Like much of the world, Dublin's been having some screwy ass fucking weather. Fact, yeah, most they of got you a fucking can... blizzard. Ireland doesn't get blizzards. No, what's happening is the jet stream has been altered yeah. this year. Um, it is above because the North Pole is just gone. Yeah, the North Pole's it's above freezing in the Arctic. Um, and it sort of warped the jet stream, so all that freezing air is getting pushed down into. Uh, the UK, Europe, so they got a fucking... Europe blizzard. is actually colder than the North Pole. So, the first thing that fucking happens with a blizzard in Dublin... Everybody lose their goddamn mind. Nine held after gang attacks Dublin Lytle with Digger during Storm Eva. Now, Dublin's Lytle, that's sort of like uh, a Food Lion or a Publix. or It's a grocery store chain. And a digger is a large fucking piece of yeah. construction equipment. Fucking excavator. Eight men have been charged after one hell and another one held after a digger rammed into a Lytle supermarket. The looting took place just hours after the city was hit with its worst snowstorm in decades. They were fucking looting because it snowed? Yes! Irish people! 
Eight men between it's not a mill. eight men aged between twenty four and forty seven have been charged with various offenses, including theft, burglary, and trespassing. Uh, another man in his thirties was arrested on suspicion of handling stolen property and being detained. Video shared on social media showed a mechanical digger pulling down part of the supermarket's outside wall. Another video post on the Irish Independent newspaper shows people walking away from the back of the shop with what appears to be items looted from inside. German discount store, which was closed at the time of the break-in, has confirmed a serious incident took place. So, a blizzard hits Ireland for the first time in, in forever, and the first reaction is, knock down the supermarket wall and steal all the food. It's not the apocalypse, guys! It's, I can't blame them for panicking, because here in Jersey where it snows all the fucking time, if the news says there's going to be an inch of snow, the day before that inch of snow, you can't find a loaf of bread or a gallon of fucking milk. To the point where when Dan first moved up here, we had a couple snowstorms. I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing and, it. It's little. And not like he came little. home from the grocery store one day and was like, so <laughs> and they didn't make the connection right away. He was like, is French toast like a thing when it snows up here? And I was like, French toast, what are you talking about? He's like, you know, when it snows, like, do, do people up here make a lot of French toast? Is that what you do? And I'm like, no. Why? And he's like, because there's no eggs, there's no milk, there's no bread. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, we're just stupid. <laughs> It's not that we really like French toast in the snow. We just think we're never going to leave the fucking house again. No, well, it, we got, even though it will do this five more times this winter. We got the snowstorm down here in Charleston that we should not have had six inches, and um, and I'm not talking penis six inches. I'm talking real six inches, and you know it. It. I'm sorry. You were trying really hard there. <laughs> you were trying really hard there, but. Even then, the stores, yeah, it was, you know, a lot of people bought stuff. No one decided to go crash into the Walmart. Yeah. I mean, but if you scale it up, <laughs> like I said, Ireland, the weather in Ireland, if you're familiar at all with the weather in the Northeast United States, the weather in Ireland is kind of like that, but more temperate. But no hurricanes, no snowstorms. Maybe five or ten degrees lower all the time. No heat waves. Like, that does, like, they don't have exciting weather, really. No, but they even, don't. even still, I didn't freak the fuck out. I just took a bunch of pictures and went, man, this fucking sucks. I mean, when Atlanta had a blizzard a couple years ago, there were people stuck on the highway for days. Yeah, but no. Literally of fucking days. Well, yeah, but none of them decided I'm going to crash right. my way into the fucking 7-Eleven. I'm saying if you distill the level of panic, <laughs> the stupid people panic, it, they're going to be exponentially more stupid, the stupid people, when confronted with something they don't understand. But what did they fuck that? I'm going to trade this canned tuna for sex when the world <laughs> falls down. What the shit? It's fucking Mad Max with snow, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I... I but like a fucking excavator. Like, and also, the cops are not happy to come out and arrest y'all ass in the snow. No. They don't want to be doing that. Because for one, they're not taking the day off. There's no snow day for police. And like, I don't even know if Irish cops carry guns. I don't, I honestly don't know. I don't remember. Well, they will definitely put your ass on the ground. Yeah, like... They don't need this crap. They're not used to being out in a blizzard either. Yeah, I guess I guess the first thing we've learned this week is when you get inclement weather, it doesn't mean ali ali oxen free. It this is not forever. This is not forever. It is gonna pass. It yeah. is that snow is gonna melt. And you you're will still see the store again. And you'll still be in jail. You'll be able to get to the Tesco next week <laughs> for some fucking digestive biscuits. We're going to be okay. We've learned you, you just you can't just start jerking it. You can't. It's I mean, that's a problem on New York City subways. Dudes just jerking it on the subway. 
but they they keep their pants on. They just shove their hand down their pants and jerk it at you. Yeah, that's the thing. Being a woman on public transit is delightful. I'm a guy and I'm sitting here going, why would you want to do that? That's that's not fun. That's not my idea. Why would you? I don't know. We've learned you cannot hide evidence in the police station. That's they're going to find that's the worst place to hide evidence. Actually, I mean, technically, Leland Palmer got away with it for 26 years. But that was in a David Lynch show. And if you're taking that as your as your instruction manual, you're so fucked. We've learned if you tell Uber to take you some way, someplace, they fucking will. So <laughs> be careful where you tell them to take you. <laughs> your ass could wind up in fucking Toronto and you're from Minneapolis. They'll take like, you. Be, be really specific about which Vancouver you mean. <laughs> I mean, you you could be like like from like fucking Portland, and then wake up and you look outside the door. There's someone going, "Kay, <laughs> kay." Um, we've learned that Axe body spray, while not only very unattractive, is is however very fucking flammable. I feel like that's some form of natural selection. <laughs> and and finally... It's just scent-based Darwinism. And finally, we've learned this week, the Oscars don't work on Skyrim rules. Just because you run away with it doesn't mean it's yours. It's not a loot drop. It's not a loot drop. Francis McDormand does not drop loot. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Here's our title. Francis McDormand McDormand does not drop loot. Oh. I Do you know what I'm supposed to do this week? What are you supposed to do this week? Chris Evans is going to be in his very first Broadway show. Okay. And Dan got me tickets as a belated birthday present. Oh shit. The show is on Thursday. Oh, We're shit. supposed to get like a ridiculous snowy nor'easter on Wednesday. So fingers crossed we still get to go. I need a haircut and I don't know what I'm wearing. So like I'm not really prepared. But whatever. We have like front we have like really close orchestra streets to see Chris Evans on Broadway. Tara. Tara, I love you. I'm not bailing you out. He might like it here. <laughs> 